You know, as people are listening to this right now, you know, we've listened to enough other interviews, um, especially from those who believe that this was the result of a demolition, a controlled demolition. And one of the things that came, comes up repeatedly is, well, if this wasn't a controlled demolition, then why were all of these uh, firefighters reporting hearing a series of explosions, especially down in the lower levels? Well, if, if you're dustifying a building, that means the material is like coming apart. It's losing its strength and integrity. Uh, the towers had water tanks every so many floors. You can't pump water all the way directly to the top anyway, so they pump it to different holding tanks every so many floors. Now, imagine what will happen when those water tanks start to dissolve and lose mm -hmm. their integrity. You're gonna, they're going to rupture. Mm -hmm. Or an air pressure tank. When it gets the wall thickness gets so thin or loses a certain amount of strength, it's going to explode. Mm -hmm. And actually, there were uh, firefighters at ground level, quite a few of them, who um, uh, witnessed Scott tanks exploding. What is a Scott tank? They're the air tanks that the firefighters wear so they can breathe good air while they're in the smoky environment. Oh, and they, and they were exploding as well? Sitting on the fire trucks. They're exploding. Yeah, the, well, that's, again, we're talking about people who almost appear to have exploded, a building that has turned to dust. 1,200 people were driven to uh, either fall or jump to their death, which I just, I still have a hard time getting my mind around that one. It's just, it's appalling. Um, I had had no idea it was that number of people. And now you're talking about these exploding Scott tanks that were sitting in their trucks. Let's go a little, let's take that a little bit further when we're talking about these uh, explosions. There were cars and trucks, uh, including fire trucks, that were toasted and literally taken into the air in some cases. How, now, how, talk about that if you would, please. I, I uh, refer to them as toasted cars because they're, they're toast. Their history. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what, I can't decide what happened to them. You know, instead of trying to force them into, you know, burned or, or whatnot, I just say that they're toast. And um, uh, there was, it seemed to be the cars, I started noticing this pattern, the, there was flip cars, but they didn't seem to be as toasted as the upright cars. And this one particular picture is a toasted car, and in front of it, there's an upside down car. It was parked like in the right place. It's just, Wheels in the air. Right. Right. And you wouldn't think it'd park that way. Well, no, you wouldn't think it would park that way. <laughs> and there's, there's a particular quote um, by uh, Rene Davila that I like. Is, is, when being questioned he's by a supervisor, he says, well, was, was your vehicle destroyed? Um, yeah, it was destroyed. Was it on fire? What? Was it on fire? Fire? We saw the sucker blow up. We heard a boom. Yeah. And not only that, some of the cars that went boom were seven blocks away. Now, this gets pretty controversial. I mean, everything here is controversial, but... What do you mean controversial? Well, I mean, if, well, um, it seems like this would be sort of a non sequitur scientifically. Why would cars blow up or be toast, not blow up, but be incinerated seven blocks away during this event? And, and in between, without burning paper. Without burning paper. How, how's that? What, how's that possible? That's why I use toasted co instead of burned, because that's weird. I, or I call it weird fires. I have to have a different term for it. Uh, yeah, there was, there's a uh, firefighter who was over by FDR Drive and saw this, this car go into spontaneous combustion. And thinking, like, it's got to be a normal situation. He's trying to fit what's happened into that. So, well, it must have been a fireball that rolled down the street and hit the car. Yeah. I didn't see the, the fireball, but how else can you explain a car going into spontaneous combustion? Well, yeah, exactly. And, and why seven blocks from this scene? Uh, that makes no sense whatsoever. And yet this all happened in uh, roughly the same time frame. And at the same time, the people that were there as this was occurring, speaking of combustion, a lot of the, the witnesses there were saying there was this odd sensation. They, they weren't, as you say, there wasn't the kind of seismic activity that you would have expected. There wasn't the crunching and crump coming down of the building sound you would have expected. But a lot of them had the sense that that they had been swept into the center of a tornado or some kind of 
、uh, weather event. And there was there was one、um, EMT who thought maybe she must have died because how else was she floating down the stairs? But having God pick her up and carry her down the stairs. Yes, floating. Float- right, and and、uh, there's it was this、uh, one particular、uh, eyewitness. I、uh, was talking about.、Um, He says, I, "I don't remember the sound of the building、yes. hitting the ground." Yeah, someone told me that it, that it was measured on the Richter scale. I don't, I don't know how true that is, but if the building was hitting the ground hard, how do I not remember the sound of it? Yeah, I think I have him written down. Michael Ober, I think, was his name. Yep, He was、exactly. an, yeah, an EMT, and again, this feeling: people were picked up. And they were tossed about, and they would land thirty, forty feet from where they had started. Just picked up, and they landed somewhere else. Cars. There, there's a picture you have on one of the pages of a car that had simply been picked up, and it looked as though it had been placed on top of a, a little wooden fence. I mean,、oh, it's a very odd picture.、Uh, that's that's Hurricane Wilma. Oh, that's Hurricane Wilma. So、right. this, it, yeah, I was drawing the the comparison with the same type of energy field. Yeah. Yeah, that same thing where it's just picked up and set down,、um, which again, there's when you're looking at that. If you want to talk about that for just a second, why were you drawing the comparison between Hurricane Wilma and the energy、uh, signature of what was happening there that day? What's going on? Well, we we started out talking about hurricanes, and、yes. um, when when I got to looking at the dust and how the dust went up, and that was another comment that Michael Ober had made is that. He he thought he was he was inside somewhere. Some said, "No, you're you're outside. It's just it's it's dark out. One hundred percent of the sunlight was blocked out by this dust that went up. It, you know, it, for for you know, I don't know, a half hour afterwards, it was up and blocking out the sunlight. And so I decided to look to see where it went when it went up. And I looked at some weather satellite pictures, thinking I could get a better look at this dust going up. And what what wait, what's this? <laughs> this hurricane. Yeah, that was the first time I saw the hurricane. And like, how weird that we weren't told about this. We, we I don't remember anything about a hurricane. Hmm. And and it was a Category Three. It was headed right to New York City for four days straight in a straight line. Well, hmm. I wonder what hurricanes can do. So I started looking into that. And they're like a giant Tesla coil, and they they produce a、uh, a static field around them. And that interferes with other types of signals, and you know people who、uh, have arthritis or other people often talk about feeling the weather coming.、Mm-hmm. They can feel that field effect ahead of the storm. The same with the reason why birds leave town or spiders pack up their webs. They sense the storm coming because they feel that field effect.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, also in hurricanes, you have cars sitting on fences, and Hurricanes are a big、uh, torsion field, and a smaller, you know, quicker acting one is like a tornado. So let's look at those too. We, we remember seeing tornadoes、uh, supposedly lifting up houses, putting them on <laughs> some place, or、um, putting a, a car on a telephone pole. But the car isn't damaged. It wasn't like it got tumbled around.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, there's a lot of evidence, like this spring, that big、uh, Joplin tornado. There's this video of these people locked in a cooler, or you know, went, ran to the cooler in the convenience store for for、uh, safety. And you, you hear, you know, everybody screaming when the tornado is tearing the place up, but you didn't hear it whoosh through, so it didn't tear the walls off of the cooler. But after it was done with, everyone's saying, "Well, is that you under me?" Is that is that your leg on top of me? So obviously the people have been jostled around, and you also saw the camera flying around.、Mm-hmm. So there wasn't a moving wind tunnel through that that、uh, cooler they're in, but they were levitated and tumbled around. Now this has to be the result of some kind of some kind of what interference with electromagnetic fields or charge or I, I mean I'm I'm not a scientist, but this is dealing with electromagnetism, isn't it? Right. It, it it turns out electricity, magnetism, and gravity all interact. So okay. So it's, it's possible to affect gravity、uh, with magnetism. And as I think we all had experience as youngsters, getting a, a nail and wrapping a wire coil around it and sticking it in a nine volt battery, it turns the magnet into.、Uh, I mean, it turns the the electricity into a magnet. 
Mm-hmm. The nail becomes a magnet. Also, we learned that if you move a conductor through a magnetic field, you get electricity, which is how Nikola Tesla you know, he discovered alternating current and applied it to uh, harnessing the, the energy from the, from the um, Niagara Falls uh, power plant. Mm-hmm. So we can turn electricity into into magnetism. We can turn magnetism into electricity. We can also affect gravity with magnetism. So there, just from what we're talking about so far, there had to be some kind of electromagnetics in play. And you were talking about tornadoes and how they have this effect where they can pick things up without uh, harming them through this this gravitational effect and and land them or set them down somewhere. But you don't have dustification with tornadoes. I mean, there's more than that at play here. Right, right. It's You sometimes do, but, uh, or or destruction. And that's just just randomly kind of oriented. And there are aspects of the WTC complex that reminded me of tornadoes. How so? Building 4, the main body of Building 4 disappeared, turned into dust, went away, and just left the north wing standing, or some of, most of the north wing standing, mm-hmm. as though it was cut off with an X-Acto knife. And one story below ground in that area, you see some people walking through the mall. It, and then uh, another story below that in the parking garage area, it looks totally unaffected. Mm-hmm. Yes, totally unaffected. As though it happened from the ground up. You know, a few little punch throughs the ground here and there. But it, it, where did the, the main body of Building 4 go? And it reminded me so much of an experience I had as a child going through Topeka, Kansas, right after that horrendous tornado that went through. You could look at through this... Um, into this apartment building that had been sliced in two. Mm-hmm. There was a made bed in there with magazines still on the on the bed, books on the dresser, and clothes hanging in the closet that weren't messed up. Yes, and your book is is riddled with these kinds of surreal photographs. And there, uh, there are photographs of cars in which the back half of the car looks fine. Um, a, a police car, for example, half of the lights are undamaged. The rest of the car is completely toasted. Right, even to the point of eating out the, the, the metal. You know they don't drive old junkers around. Right, right. The metal, yeah, the metal is eaten out, and yet the other half of the car is inta- totally intact. Like it's, it just came off the showroom floor. Exactly. I mean, it, it doesn't even have scratches on the paint, it looks like. And, and, I and mean, plas- yeah, plastic police lights on the top on one side look untouched, and they would melt pretty easily. Yes, and, and again, I mean, what what can cause something like that? What it, I'm not suggesting that you tell us, I mean, what did happen, but I'm saying what can cause that kind of thing? When I see an abrupt change, uh, well, especially at the, between the driver's, I mean, the front seat door and the back seat door, I start thinking about a rubber gasket between the two. Mm-hmm. That maybe it had some electrical or something something that uh, that sealed from the the phenomenon continuing further, but the other side of it where it has that circular spot that's unaffected. That was a big aha moment for me. With the background in interferometry, I know that you can have one beam or another, but where they interfere, you get a different effect. So explain that to us a little more regarding these cars. Well, it's kind of like, you know, contact print with with a photographic film. You see an abrupt area, not shades of gray. Mm-hmm. So there's there's a something that caused uh, the toasting, and then one nanometer over, it was in pristine condition. Fires don't do that. So are you saying there was a type of interference that would occur to change that? That would easily explain that some type of interference, where because uh, otherwise you you would have a tapering off effect. Right, right, that makes sense. You see cars that are that are burned from, and I'm not going to say toast, I'm going to say burn you know, from a car fire that we know is a car fire, you'll see at the edge of where it stops burning, you know, ch- uh, you know toasted area and it's charred and then, the, you know, less and less and then it's pristine. It's a, there's a transition zone. Yes. But to have something abrupt, it's like photographic masking yes. in a way. Yes. It's a, again, I mean, there's a surreal quality to that photograph, but also many, many other photographs 